What's up guys, C93 here, and today we're going to be talking about Torghast. We're going to be going through how to solo Twisted Corridors from layer 1 to 8 as an outlaw rogue. We're going to talk about the anima powers you need, the anima powers to avoid, and the ones that are okay to just stack up if you get them. So without further ado, let's get into it. So I've done every layer on Twisted Corridors, I did every one of them by myself, I was always running solo. Uh, a group definitely would have been easier, but I kind of just wanted to do it by myself on my own time. I did it when I had a lot of downtime, and to be honest, layers 1 to 6 were pretty easy. Layer 7 was a little bit more difficult, but I got some really good anima powers for it, and I was able to breeze through the last boss pretty smoothly. And then layer 8 proved some difficulty, I had to do it two times before I finally got like the anima powers I needed, and it made it a lot easier once I got that. But up until then, they do hit pretty hard, so it's really crucial to get the anima powers I'm going to go over as soon as possible. Now I know I say to get them as early as possible, but it's not that easy because it is RNG. The first time I did it, I got to floor 16 before I realized I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to be able to take the final boss on like this. So I backed out. And the second time I did it, I got some of the anima powers I needed, but I died to some silly stuff, getting a little too over aggressive. So I ended up backing out at like floor five or six, just because I knew I don't want to go through it and then waste it all at the end. So I backed out. And the third time I did it, it went very smoothly from the start. I got some good anima powers flowing nice and early. It was able to kind of breeze through it. And I was able to one-shot the boss, which was nice. It did get a little sketchy at times, but I'd never fought the boss before, so I didn't know the moves. But using the techniques I talk about in this video, I was still able to get them down in one shot. And I'm really happy to have it done, because the mount that you can use in the maw makes it so much easier to quest in there. So first off, let's talk the technique, the strategy we're going to go over, you know, how we're going to get through this with these hard hitting mobs and being solo without a healer. So what you're going to aim for is to be immune to damage all the time. Now I'll explain that when we go over anima powers, but you're not going to be able to out heal it with crimson vial or heart health zones or potions or whatever you have with you. You're going to need to be immune. So that's why these anima powers I'm going to go over are super important to have. You're not going to be able to finish the higher layers of Torghast without them because you just get hit too hard and without a healer you'll never survive. So that being said, there is a ton of anima powers that you get. You, I've had 64, 70, so I'm not going to go over every anima power. I'm just going to go over the very important ones and the ones to avoid And Also there are a couple that are bugged right now, so take those kind of at your own risk. Also, I am Kyrian for this. Echoing Reprimand has some excellent anima powers and they benefit a lot in doing big damage. Uh, Night Fae, the Sepsis one, is also very good. I've heard very good things about it. There is one that can take 15% of the main target's health and spreads it out in damage to people around you. And when some of these final bosses have millions of health, that is huge damage right away. But for right now, I am a Kyrian Outlaw Rogue. So all right, we're gonna get into the bugged anima powers first. Now, the first one that I had a big problem with is Unceasing Chain Link. It's the finishing move increases the damage of your next combo point generator by 150%. This is an awesome, awesome, awesome one to have, but it does almost decay. So if you have three or four stacks of it, it'll eventually drop back down to one. So my best bet was saving it towards the last couple floors and then getting it if I had the opportunity to. That way, when you hit the final floor, you still have a couple stacks of it and you can still benefit greatly from the damage increase it gives. Another bug power was Scroll of Forewarning. It's a duration of evasion, faint, cloak of shadows, and vanish increased by three seconds. I noticed once you had it stacked up a couple times, uh, you'd look at it in a floor or two and it would be back down to one. So you would lose that nine seconds you had and it would go down to just increase by three seconds, making it kind of a wasted anima power. It is good for three seconds, but when you have it stacked up and you lose it, it hurts a lot. So those are the two anima powers that I used the most that I noticed were most detrimental when they decayed away. Uh, you kind of relied on that additional time from the evasion or cloak of shadows or you relied on that big hit coming after your finisher. So with those dropping away, it's better off to save them till you get closer to the end. But if you do get them and there's no other good options, they're not bad to have. They do help all the way up until that last floor. Just know that they will bug and decay away. Uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure it's a bug. I don't think they're meant to have some anima powers fade away and others not. So just keep that in mind when you're grabbing them. Now we're going to go more into the strategy and the necessary anima. You want to build defensive early and then take specific damaging anima whenever possible. 
but you do want to get these defensive ones up and running as soon as possible. Now the first one you're going to get is Restless Onyx Geodes. And what it does is your grappling hook causes you to gain 15 seconds of Cloak of Shadows, Evasion, Faint, or Crimson Vial. This is the most important anima to get because this is how you're going to get your immunity. Because the next anima you're going to be looking for is Slippery Wrath Coil. The cooldown of grappling hook is reduced by 6 seconds and generates 1 combo point. Now you want to stack this as high as possible to reduce the cooldown of grappling hook as much as possible. You're also going to be looking into getting retractable hook whether through animas or a talent swap at one of your buy floors. That that way you can get the cooldown of grappling hook down to basically every finisher and it's off cooldown and you can keep reusing it over and over again and reapplying that 15 seconds of cloak, evasion, faint, or crimson vial. And if you keep doing that in between finishers, you will be immune to damage. And since Slippery Wrath Coil generates one combo point, when you stack it up, you get more combo points for your grappling hook, making it even easier to get to your final combo point to finish and use the grappling hook again. So before we move on to more of the necessary anima powers, those two are the most important to have. They're the most crucial combo you can get in Twisted Corridors, because if you can't get hit, you can survive. And even if you're not doing that much damage, but you have that routine down of consistently having 15 seconds of cloak or evasion up you're not going to get hit by mobs and in twisted corridors survivability is key next we're going to go over some more defensive animals you can start stacking early obleron endurance increases maximum health by 15 percent try to stack that up as much as possible as well because just the more health you have the better if you do happen to get hit in the back while you're grappling hook or something you want to make sure you have the health to survive that hit like I said, the mobs hit around 30 to 40 K-ish on higher floors, and that's just the trash mobs, not even the boss. Next, you're also going to want to get Secret Spices. Killing a mall rat increases your maximum health by 2%, up to 100%. So this is a rare animal power. You're definitely going to want to get it early because you're going to want to have that stacked up to 100% as quick as possible, and you got to kill 50 mall rats to do it. Sometimes you get those floors that don't have mall rats, so the earlier you can get it, the better. Next, you're going to want to get Blood Gorge Leech. Your damaging spells and abilities have a very high chance to heal you for 5% of your maximum health. You want to stack this three times if possible. It's not necessary for boss fights since you'll be relying on immunity, but it is good sustain for trash mobs throughout the floors. If you're healing 15% at a very high chance, it happens quite often, so if you take a heavy shot and you're not immune for it, you can heal right back up pretty quickly. Next up is Shadow Blade's Gift. Now, Shadow Blade's Gift will give you acrobatic strikes, but if you already have it, you can talent into Retractable Hook instead. It's fairly common, so I always start with acrobatic strikes because you most likely will get it. Worst case scenario, you can use your steward if you're carrying to change talents, or you can change on a buy floor. So those are the anima powers that are going to give you the most survivability. The 15 seconds of cloak or evasion is really good, paired with the slippery wrath coil reducing the cooldown of grappling hook, letting you get it off more often and giving you combo points when you use it. Also with Shadow Blade's gift giving you retractable hook, reducing that cooldown even further, you're going to stay immune from the grappling hooks and you're also going to be able to heal if you do get hit and you will have the health to take that hit. Next, we're going to look at necessary offensive anima powers. Now, you're going to see a running trend that you're going to be relying a lot on grappling hook for damage, immunity, and generating combo points. So the first and most important offensive anima power is first steps. Targets within 8 yards of your grappling hook destination suffer an additional 400% damage from your next finishing move. Now using this, combined with all the cooldown reduction you got in your grappling hook, you're going to be able to do it almost every finisher. And since you're going to be doing it for the big damage finishers, you're also going to be getting that 15 seconds of cloak, evasion, faint, or crimson vial, getting even more use out of that first anima power you want. Now the next most important ability is a Kyrian ability, it's called Reverberating Strike. Damaging finishing moves that consume your animal charge combo point function as if you consume 20 combo points. So it's going to do 20 combo points worth of damage as opposed to the normal 7 that it comes with. Now this, paired with the 400% additional damage from first steps, is what's going to make you do huge damage. You hit for a million plus on the final boss easy. Now next up on the necessary offensive anima is Ringing Doom. Echoing Reprimand's cooldown is reset when your anima charge combo point is consumed. So when you use your finisher on your anima charge combo point, it wipes the cooldown away from Echoing Reprimand and you can do it again, resetting that anima charge combo point. Now, if you have Slippery Wrath Coil stacked three times like you should, your grappling hook is going to generate three combo points. It can make it difficult to land on the Echoing Reprimand anima charge combo point, but if you know you have Cloak of Shadows in 
an evasion up. You can't take the time to throw in a single combo point generating move, even if it's like a shiv or something, to get that combo point, use it, reapply Echoing Reprimand, and then Grappling Hook again. Hopefully you get it in a better position. You'll see in the video that when it lands on the fourth combo point, that's the sweet spot because you can finish at five, you get one back, you Grappling Hook, and it'll put you right at that fourth combo point. Now the next offensive ability you really want to get is Jack of All Trades. It's listed as an epic, but it is fairly common, and what it does is you gain Adrenaline Rush, Vendetta, and Shadow Blades when any are activated. This is really good if you have the Celerity Legendary, where your Slice and Dice has a chance to proc a couple seconds of Adrenaline Rush, because even when it procs that short amount of time of Adrenaline Rush, you get the full Shadow Blades, and if you're targeting somebody when it goes off, you get a full Vendetta on the target as well. This helps all through Trash Mobs, and it helps a lot on the boss too, because the Vendetta Damage Spike and the Shadow Blades Damage Spike is really good. In the last offensive animal power, now it is not a rare or an epic, it is actually a common one, but it is a very important one. It's called the Last Blade. Outlaw Dispatch deals an additional 25% damage. You want to stack this as much as possible because you will hit super hard if you have this stacked up. I could finish most of them with four or five stacks, giving me an additional 100 to 125% damage. And when you hit that with an Anima Charge combo point and first steps, that's when you start breaking the million damage hits and it makes the final bosses so much easier to go through when they have tons and tons of health. Now the last Anima power that I think you need to get, you can only get from Ravenous Anima cells. Those are those orbs you can buy from the vendor that cost 250 Phantasma and they turn a non-elite mob into an Anima power. A lot of times this is the only way to get that specific Anima power. So you want to make sure to have one of those orbs on you at all times. And you're going to use that orb to get Flame Starved Cinders. Absorbs all nearby heat, reducing fire damage taken by 65%. This is crucial to have when you hit one of those floors that gives you that stacking debuff that does a percentage of your health as fire damage every 5 seconds because that debuff is going to stack and do more and more damage every five seconds unless you have flame star of cinders it also helps on trash mobs because when you hit those floors everything casts flame attacks on you so reducing the damage taken by 65 percent is huge and what you're going to want to do is use one of those ravenous anima cells on any of the flame guys so you can use it on flame forge master forge keeper more sworn fire caller more sworn flame tender uh, the blazing elementals or the burning ember guards any of these guys when you turn them into an anima power it will give you flame starved cinders and it is a very important defensive anima to have so those are the most important anima powers to get there are some other ones but those are the ones that are going to keep you alive the longest they're going to make you do the most damage and they're going to be the most beneficial for you now we're going to go into just some good anima to grab if you happen to come across them some of them are common some of them aren't but they are good for additional damage or additional survivability or even just gaining a little bit of phantasma to uh to buy some more things from the vendor the first one is dark fortress while in combat every 10 seconds gain five percent reduced damage taken for 12 seconds this effect stacks up to five times it is a very very good anima to grab because it stacks up to 25 percent da reduced damage taken and it's really good fight in the trash mobs where you, you don't need to be grappling hook every finisher you know you can take them head on having that 25 percent reduced damage is going to make sure you're a little safer when you're doing it Next up is Significant Phantasma. It increases the Phantasma gain by 25%. It's good to grab at least one of these. That way you know when you're going into a buy floor, you do have the anima in order to buy either everything he has in stock or at least the most important things he has in stock. Next thing up is Silent Footpads. Entering stealth heals you for 5% of your maximum health and leaving stealth increases your damage by 5%. This is really good if you get a couple stacks because you can grappling hook into the fight and then your first finisher is going to have that damage buff attached to it. The healing buff isn't very important since it's solo so you can't really vanish, but coming out of stealth with a 15% damage increase is really good to start the fight off with, especially if you're starting off with that grappling hook finisher. Next is Leather Apron. Targets deal 15% reduced damage for 5 seconds after recovering from your crowd control abilities. Now in Twisted Corridors, everything can be stunned. And if you have a couple stacks of that, when they come out of the stun doing 30-45% less damage, can really kind of counteract those heavy hitters who might get a shot on you, say your evasion's off or your grappling hook and you get tagged in the back. If they're coming out of a stun, they're going to do a lot less damage with that hit. 
Next up, you have Red Ink. Your Lethal Poison now also applies Red Ink Poison, causing the target to take 30% additional damage from your poisons and bleeds, and suffers additional nature damage over 12 seconds. How much nature damage changes depending on how much attack power you have, but it is a good boost to passive damage since you don't need to apply it, it applies automatically with your poisons. Next, we have Shadow Lace Armaments. Combo point generating abilities now also deal an additional 3% damage to nearby targets for each combo point you have. Doesn't really help on bosses, it's not great for single target, but it does help you get down trash mobs, and it also helps you break pots easier, which can be kind of a tedious task if you have to single target each pot. Next up, we have Distracting Charges. Distract attaches explosive charges to the target that detonates after 10 seconds, dealing 800% of attack power and fire damage, and stunning for 3 seconds. Since everything can be stunned, throwing this on before you initiate the fight can be really good because you're going to start the fight, it'll blow up and stun the target for 3 seconds, giving you a little time to situate yourself, get your grappling hook off, you know, make sure you have the proper immunities for the fight. Moving on, we got Terror Laden Slumber Sand. Your blinded and sap targets suffer 50% of the damage you deal to other targets without being broken out of sap or blind. Now this is a much better animal power than people give it credit for, because when you're soloing, sometimes you can't take those multiple elites that show up on the higher floors, so what you want to do is grappling hook in, sap one of them, and then blind the other one, and then clear the trash around it, and you'll do a bunch of damage to them while they're just incapacitated with sap and blind. Now, Sometimes when you grappling hook in and go for the sap, they notice you right away. So be wary about what you're gonna, when you're going to do it. Make sure you have a vanish off cooldown so you can get out of there if you need to. But most of the time, if you don't get the sap, you 100% get the blind. And you can at least take one of them out of the equation, kill the other one, and then the blinded target will still be up but have probably about half health. Next up, if you're Kyrian, we have File of Light. Your steward's File of Serenity now restores an additional 25% of your health. If you can get a couple of these, your File of Serenity will restore about 95% of your health, which are really good in those, uh, those panic situations where you get hit pretty hard. You can pop that and you're almost back to full health. Another good Kyrian one is Strigodium or Strigodium. Uh, what it does is your steward can assist you in combat. So you call your steward, you talk to him, he gives you the option to stick around and keep my team healed or stick around and give my team the buff. Now the healing is okay, but the mastery buff does help outlaw in this situation because with evasion rank two, every time you dodge an attack, it procs your mastery. And the more mastery you have, the more damage you're gonna do every time you dodge an attack. So it's kind of a nice thing to have, especially when you're gonna be relying on immunity and relying on having evasion up as often as possible you are going to do a little bit additional damage every time you dodge an attack it's not a huge jump but it is a little bit of additional passive damage now the last good anima to grab if you come across it is crumbling aegis gain immunity to all damage and harmful effects for one and a half minutes after choosing this item now this can be really good if it's timed right. When you get this, you don't necessarily need to use it immediately because when you start moving around, it'll say pending anima power and you can pick it up whenever you want. So if you get it and you're going into a new floor or you're going into a boss fight, you can hang on to it for a little bit and pop it right before you initiate that fight. I've gotten it where I've gone into new floors, started running around, sprinting, grabbing everything I could. As soon as I got a huge amount of people around me, I popped it and I couldn't be killed and I was able to kill everything very quickly and kind of burn through that floor. I've also gotten it on a boss. On layer 6, the last vendor before, I bought one of the animal orbs, popped it open, and it gave me that. I was able to pop it right before the boss fight, go in, take no damage, and kill the boss with ease. So if you get lucky and you get one of them on a boss fight, that's excellent. If it does show up and you don't have anything else to take from it, grab that, get a big pull from the floor, and then pop that and kill it all. Next, we're going to go into the stat boosting animal. Now, these are fairly straightforward. They're usually always good to grab unless you have a better option. First, Gift of Ardenwell. Your spells and attacks have a chance to grant you 35% haste for 15 seconds. Really good, especially for Outlaw. Maldraxian Repayment. Your spells and attacks have a chance to grant you 35% versatility for 15 seconds. That is a flat out damage increase. Versatility increases your damage done. Overgrowth Seedling. Increases your armor by 100%. Not super important, but less damage taken is always good. Offer of Souls, obtain 10 Soul Remnants. Soul Remnants increase your primary stat by a percentage each one. So additional 10 is additional 10% agility. Very good to have, and stamina too. It will raise your health a little bit. Soul Ward Clasp, your attacks have a chance to create a zone of soul empowerment nearby. Any player may collect this to gain 25% damage and healing done, and 25% movement speed for 10 seconds. Movement speed isn't super important, but 25% damage done is huge. Spectral Oats. Heal 2% of your maximum health every one second while running. 
If you're running around, you get hit by something, you're going to start healing your health up. Not super important again, but a passive healing is always pretty good. Valara's Cape of Subterfuge. Your attacks have a chance to cause you to fade away, reducing your threat for 6 seconds. While you are under this effect, your critical strike chances increase by 25%. Reduction to threat isn't very important, but increasing your critical strike chance by 25% is very big. You're going to hit harder and more often. Unstable form. While in combat, become incorporeal at random intervals, reducing damage taken by 99% for 3 seconds. Excellent if your grappling hook doesn't proc the right immunity, and this goes off, you're not going to get hit for that big damage, you're going to get hit for a fraction of it. Alethium Weights. Your strength, agility, stamina, and intellect is increased by 30%, but you are no longer able to jump. This is well worth the trade-off. Jumping is not important, and 30% agility and stamina is awesome that's such a huge increase to your primary stat you definitely want to take this lastly disemboweler's hook damaging an enemy whose health is below 10 percent will disembowel them instantly killing them disemboweling an enemy will cause splashback damage dealing damage up to 10 percent of your total health because you basically take 10 percent of their health away and if you only get hit by 10 percent of your health you're gonna be fine so that's it for stat boosting anima you want to get. Any other stat boosting anima that has a trade off where you lose damage done or you lose healing done, you want to stay away from. They might be pretty good towards the last couple floors where you're not going to need that healing. You're going to be relying on immunity. But during trash mobs, you do want to be able to heal if you get hit by something that you weren't ready for. You want to be able to pop Phyla of Serenity, Crimson Vial, Potion, whatever it is. And if you have too much healing done reduction, you're not going to get healed for that and you can easily die. Now next we're going to move on to some anima that might seem good, but you really don't want to get. The first one is Yelshear's Power Glove. Your damaging spells and abilities empower your weapon, increasing the damage of your next melee strike by one, stacking up to 100 times. It seems like it would help you, but you never stack above a couple in a fight, especially if you're soloing. If you're not soloing and you have a team with you, you can get away with doing some other things and working your way around it to build those stacks up. But when you're one on one things, you're never going to get those stacks up very high and it is not worth taking it over a better anima. Next, Frostbite Wand. Dealing an enemy will also apply Frostbite, dealing damage equal to 50% of their current hit points. After 4 seconds, the enemy will start regenerating all of its lost health over a period of 10 seconds. Creatures can only be Frostbitten once. Bosses have so much health that when you reduce them to 50%, you're not going to be able to take the other 40-50% to 50 away faster than it's going to take them to regenerate. It kind of feels bad when you knock them down half health and you see them slowly going up and up and up and up and up. Just doesn't seem worth it to me. Even on trash mobs, you either kill them so quickly that you don't need this, or if you're not going to kill them quickly, they're just going to regenerate their health and it just feels bad again. It looks good, but it's not worth it. Next up, we have Pocketed Soul Cage. Opening the cage will reward 10 to 20 soul remnants. Now, I've gotten this a couple times, and every time I've gotten it and opened a cage, I haven't got the soul remnants. So I think it's bugged. It also disappears, which I've heard that you can get multiple of them, so that's why it disappears. You get it for one cage. But even when I did open a cage right after getting it, I didn't get the soul remnants it said I was going to get, and I lost the power. So, for now, stay away from it. So those are the animal powers you do want to stay away from. Lastly, we're going to go over some of the generic ones you get from every vendor that are always good to grab. They cost less than the other anima powers, and they're just good small ones to stack up to give you a little extra damage, a little extra stat boost. So it's pretty much all the Oblerons. The Oblerons Ephemera increases versatility by 3%. Oblerons Spikes increases critical strike chance by 3%. Oblerone Venom increases critical damage by 6%, and Oblerone Winds increases haste by 3%. Now, all of these are cheap, and they come around all the time. Always good to grab if you don't have a better option, and always good to grab from the vendor every chance you get. The versatility one is really good because it's a flat damage increase, and the Oblerone Venom, the increased critical damage by 6%, is also really good. If you stack a couple of those, you're going to have a big jump in your critical strike damage, so when you do crit, you're going to crit even harder than you would without it. All right, guys, that is the list of anima powers. Now, really quick, before we wrap this video up, how to fight the bosses. This is what I would do every boss fight. I would grappling hook in, cheap shot, build my combo points up, finish, grappling hook, build my combo points up, kidney shot, grappling hook, build my combo points up, finish, and anytime I could, use echoing reprimand and use that charge. Now you can use the anima charge combo point even if you don't have the grappling hook debuff on them, the 400% increase, because you're still gonna do a ton of damage if you have built up the last blade and you have reverberating strikes where it does 20 combo point finishes instead of seven. 
You also want to keep Adrenaline Rush up as often as possible for the Shadow Blade buff and the Vendetta debuff. And you're going to basically just keep doing finishers, grappling hook, finishers, grappling hook, finishers, grappling hook. I almost never really re-rolled the bones. It wasn't super necessary for me because I was relying on grappling hooks and finishers to build combo points and do damages. I was throwing stuns in whenever I could just to give myself a little breathing room to do another grappling hook. But basically that's it. Grappling hook, finisher, grappling hook, finisher. If you can get the Echoing Reprimand Anima Charge, that's excellent too. If you can get it on the fourth combo point, you would spend your fifth combo point get that one back and then grappling hook up to it and that grappling hook will put you right at the fourth combo point right at that sweet spot for the animal charge and you can hit huge when you do that otherwise you're just finishing and grappling hook so there we have it guys that is how to solo twisted corridors as an outlaw rogue it is relatively simple once you get the right anima powers you're almost guaranteed to finish it as long as you're using it properly you're not getting over aggressive on the trash pulls because if you do pull too many and you give them your back you can get killed very easily so you want to be a little cautious don't make big pulls and then keep that grappling hook on cooldown as much as possible, popping it as often as possible, trying to stay immune to damage while hitting big finishers from the first step anima power. Hope you guys liked the video. If you liked the video, please like the video and subscribe. Also, enjoy the mount when you finally finish it. It is a tedious and long process, but the mount is very worth it, especially when you're going to be doing them off for the rest of the expansion. I'm sure they're going to bring more stuff into it. Having the mount to run around is going to make it a lot easier to do. And till then, guys, C93 out.